If you haven't seen Mike Porter's video of Ron Ranson, very old in there now, coming up to 90, he was the uh, instigator of the big brush water, uh, watercolour technique about 35 plus years ago. And that's about how long I've been associated with, with this, although there was a 15 year gap in my watercolour career in favour of oils. But uh, I went back to it to, to help a friend out <clears throat> and I had to relearn all the techniques. And Mike has made this lovely, lovely video of showing Ron demonstrating with his uh, his hake and his butcher's tray. And it is beautifully overlaid with some classical guitar music. It's a dreamy experience. I would highly recommend it. That's Mike Porter showing Ron Ransom doing three demonstrations. A real treasure. So, in tribute to Ron Ranson, I'm going to just do a doodle or something similar to his style. Now he he would wet the paint all over, but in the old days he he would wet he would use the paint straight from the tube and mix up a, a wash and, and he would wash the paper with the colour. He mentions uh, yellow ochre on the. Uh, video but I, th I, I think I remember it being more sienna. I think uh, yellow ochre is uh, rather more opaque than the raw sienna. That's why I use it and I thought one did as well. But, but anyway, it comes highly recommended. So there's a, just a basic wash of colour. Um, we can put a bit of, I, I've worked these paints by the way, just a bit of, bit of a spray so we can just put a bit of Bit of, bit of, bit of blue, and then put a bit of Payne's grey. I have got some fresh Payne's grey on the palette because I wasn't going to do any more today. But when I saw the video for the third time, I, I was so inspired, and I, I couldn't waste all my afternoon in front of the television. But it's Saturday. So we'll just put in some cloud and as we come to the the lower down the horizon we can just put smaller smaller clouds in there. And we can darken it up a bit here and there, just a bit of shadow, cloud shadow. I mean the, the palette is lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber. Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna, but you don't have to use them all, and I probably won't. But just work away. A bit blue in with that as well. So we can just get some cloud shadow. Okay, that's probably a bit fussy. Well, now we'll put in a bit of distance. There's one, one of the demos is, I've done it before, it's, it's a great favourite of mine, with just a, a tree and some dry brush foreground, looking across an estuary. And it's so reminiscent of the ones I've done of the Colne River, looking across from Wivenhoe and Arlesford to the far bank, Rowhedge. I think it's called Rowhedge. So we put a bit of a, a, a greeny blue hills it's all very gentle, Essex countryside, going out towards the sea. I've got the board at, at, at the, uh, a, a 30 degree angle. Oops. I, I do uh, prefer to work this angle but it's not always the best the best way and that's the papers the the uh, waters run a little bit and we can do something about that now put in a bit of bit of color in there this this area is uh,
useful for its, uh, its sand and, and gravel deposits. So just a lot of quarrying going on here, Harlesford quarries. Okay, I'll bring that down a bit. I'll just see if I can soak up some of that, some of those runs. Because that's the water. Not entirely. I might I'll turn the landscape down a little bit. Yeah. Right, okay. So let's get some trees in there. A bit of paint's grey. Uh, this is the, the beauty of the, the uh, colour straight out of the tube is you've got really thick paint when you need it. So let's just come down. Luscious. Paint's grey, blue, yellow. I try to keep the horizon. I noticed on Ron, Ron's drawing, he, he penciled the horizon. That's something I don't do. That's all going uphill quite a lot, isn't I? I'll have to do something about that. Put some burnt umber under that to show some beach, although it's a river, it was just mud, mud flats. Oh, that's a bit better. Clean the brush. Watercolour painting, when you start to make a bit of progress with it, is quite addictive. See, the, the, the burnt umber is quite hard now, but you do a bit of the blue. When your brush splits, just bring it together again. Okay? I'll just go across here. Put the sienna in there. Leave a little bit of sparkle. Digging it in the, yellow, the raw sienna as well there. Okay, that's not quite straight there. Doesn't matter because you get, when the tides are out, it all, all becomes mud. Part of the channel, but uh, I have found we've got a boat there. And they had an older boat. I think it was called a, a, um, a crabber, and we took it up towards Colchester, which is that way. And we were in about six inches of water as we were against the, the tide was going out. So we couldn't go too far. Uh, no, I just want to just put some more trees in there. I'm not copying. This doesn't exist in reality. It's just a memory of it. Okay, so. Some more dark in there. There's some trees on the on the edge. Okay, that would do. I just want to put in a bit of raw sienna along that edge just to see if I can straighten it up a little bit. I'm not really very happy with that. Bit of burnt sienna, burnt umber as well. Oh, 
Right, that will have to do. So now we're going to put in a... In reality, there's a dike going all the way along this bit of the, uh, the estuary, the coal estuary, because it's very low-lying in Essex. This is a bit hilly the, this side. That's more, it's more hilly than actually is in reality. I've, uh, I've exaggerated it to give some distance. But the trees will more or less be behind. But for the sake of the, the demonstration that Ron did, it was a case of just going in. Mix a bit of grey with it. And he was very, very gentle with his technique. Very arm sort of bashing. Now the paper is is drying nicely. Some sienna. He gets these lovely dry brush textures in the work. No, just Playing with the colour. I'll, I'll treat some of this as a uh, bit of salt marsh. A bit of green, I think. Just hints of it here and there, leaving quite a bit of sparkle. Right, I'm going to give that a bit of a dry, so I'll take your headphones off. Whoops, my lead is around my tripod. Okay, Ooh, turn on. <clears throat> Now I'll, I'll clean my brush and I'll go back over the over, over this now, put this tree in. Now it, he used more or less straight out the uh, tube. But I'll put a bit of grey with it. I will Dark here. Nice and dark. Quite a bit of shadow there. I'll use the finger. Ron was using a bit of plastic card. Uh, okay. 
and we'll balance that with a bit of greeny shrubbery sort of just sticking up here a little bit Okay, so I've got to do something on the water there with a bit of dry brush, but that's really nice and dry. I'll get my brush clean. I need lots of rag. The tubes of paint I, I use, uh, the Ron, I don't know what he uses now, but it, the, the, it was the 21 milliliter tubes of Cotsman watercolour made by Windsor and Newton. It's, it's the quantity rather than, than who makes the paint. Because all artists paint are pretty good, but these are student qualities. Okay, so um, let us use a bit of rigor work now. <coughs> so, same colours, and just using the rigor at the, at the end. So you don't get a too mechanical shape on it, on the more spontaneous looking of it. Okay, so we can do the same in here. But don't overdo this. A little goes a long way. There. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm going to give that a good dry. So I'll take your headphones off again. and a bit of dry brush now just to show a little bit of wind rustling ruffling on the surface of this the river i'll do that in in the paints gray and the the gray the alizarin crimson shall i say and just slightly just Just scoot across that though. Give that a bit of a dry. And I'll put some little boats on. Headphones off again. So the beauty of doing a dark background is you can lift out. Now I've got a question about this and I, I think if I understood right do I cut shapes in, in, a, in a bit of card and use that as a template and, and rub away but no I don't. I just use a, a, a stiffish brush, it's an acrylic brush, a nylon daily around me, long flat and I just lift out some or loosen the paint like that with the wet brush and just blot it. Now, not being nautical, I myself bound to be, be wrong. But it's just an object in the landscape. And you can see you can get it almost back to the paper. And then we'll just put a little bit of a
something like that. Don't write in and say I haven't got a creative device. I know that. So put another one over here. Not so easy, just just a bit, bit of a red boat there, reddish. Okay, that that will do. That's all I'm going to do on that. A couple of birds and signature. And then we'll put in a mount. Now let's see what we've done. Sign. Okay, that's it. I think, if I remember rightly, Ron Manson used to use Buckingford or the spiral Langton blocks, 12 sheet blocks, 20 by 16. I think that's what he used to use. But then I think he, his channel or his books and videos took off. And then I think you can afford different sorts of paper, but I don't know. But anyway, that, that is a sort of tribute to Ron. He's using his palette, his colours. Um, I, I think, I got an idea latterly, he's using cadmium yellow rather than cadmium yellow light or pale, lemon yellow. But anyway, we've got a warm foreground and a cool distance, and we've got a busy sky. So let's have a look closely at it. Uh, right, um, I'll zoom in. I can't get it square on, not at that angle. So let's just have a look at the. With this, they're the boats. They're quite effective. Foreground, very simply done. Just a bit of Payne's grey. Burnt umber and some raw sienna, and you get lots of different tones. There's the tree. Could have done it green, but but that shows a bit of mud flatting, mud flats. So there we are. Let's uh, zoom out. Oops. So there we are. Um, look at the coal estuary. Tribute to Ron Ransom. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye bye.